Hello everybody, welcome to the JavaScript course. In this video, I'm going to talk about arrow functions. An arrow function is a shorthand form of a typical function setup. And in setting up an arrow function, I can include multi-line statements. Now, let us see the HTML file first. The HTML file is quite simple. I just include a title and a heading. And after that, I just link the HTML file to the JavaScript file called myscript.js, which is stored inside the JS folder. And you can see that the HTML file is stored separately, and the JavaScript file is stored inside the JS folder. Now, let's go to the uh, JavaScript file. We can see that we have a line called useStrict at the very beginning of the JavaScript file. This makes sure that we can just use the strict mode for the JavaScript content. Now I'm going to tell you the way to set up an arrow function. Now this is the way to set up an arrow function. So I just use a variable name and I just use an equal sign. So I'm going to assign something to the getPower variable and things like that. I have two parameters called base and exponent. And how do I use these two parameters? I just use an arrow symbol like this one to set up the expression as follows, base times times exponent. So I'm going to find out the power of a number. Okay, so the base is raised to the power indicated by the exponent variable. And the value will be stored in the get power variable. So we can see that I just use one line to set up a function by using the arrow function approach. So this variable has a content which is equivalent to the function declaration below. Okay, so you see, um, the original function declaration is like this one. I have to use the return statement to send the result coming from the calculation to the variable. But if I just use an arrow function, I can make the setup a bit shorter. Okay. Okay, let me call the function. So you see, I just call the arrow function so simply, as simply as what we do for normal function declaration. Okay, so let me save it and reload the page. Yes, I will see 32 as the answer because I just do 2 to the power 5 according to the function definition in the arrow function. Okay, so this is a pretty simple idea of the arrow function. Now you see that I have two parameters passed to the function. Is it able for us to have no parameter in the arrow function? Yes, we can. So let us see an example shown here. Okay, you see that I set up a hello world function and the parameter list has nothing inside. And then I just say that I want to print out hello world as the value uh, inside the hello world variable. And when I call the function using the alert window, I'm able to show the message saved to the hello world function. So let me see the result by saving it first, and I reload the page. Yes, you can see that I can print out hello world because the hello world value is just an arrow function indicated by this string, okay? So we can see that we don't have to pass values to the arrow function. We can just leave the thing empty inside the brackets, okay? Can we include more contents in the arrow function definition? Yes, we can. So in order to do so, we just include curly brackets for multi-line statements. And we have to include the semicolon after the, the end of the uh, curly bracket declaration. Now let us see an example like this one.
Okay, I set up a function called getText, and I'm going to pass two parameters to the function. And how do we handle the two parameters? So I'm going to find out the yearly income by multiplying salary by 12 first. So I have one variable, which is a local variable inside the getText function. And I'm going to return a value coming from the yearly income variable. How do I do that? I multiply yearly income by the percentage I passed to the function, and I divide the answer by 100, so that I'm going to get the yearly income portion that is required to be taxed. So I have to use the return keyword at the end to really send the value to be shown as the output of the getText function. Okay. So how can I call the getText function? I can do something like this. So when I have a salary of $5,000 and the tax percentage is 20%, what will be the tax for the entire year? Let me see. Save. Reload. Yes, I will have $12,000 to be the tax for the entire year. So I just calculate the yearly income first, which is equal to 60000 And from 60000 I'm going to take 20% of it to be the tax for the entire year. So the amount will be 12000 Okay. So I have to include the semicolon at the end of the uh, error function declaration, okay? Otherwise, um, the function may not work for some browsers, okay? And this is the way we set up error functions with multi-line statements. We just include the multi-line statements with a pair of curly brackets, okay? So this video has already discussed the simple way of setting up error functions in just one line, for example. And we can also set up error functions without any arguments. So we just leave the parameter list empty. And also, we are able to set up multi-line statements for our error functions by using the return keyword to um, just send out the answer um, to the outside world. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions about my video, Please leave your questions on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.